In this video we're going to talk about changes to the clear coat function in Blender 4.0. It's now been renamed to be simply coat. In order to talk about coat, we first need to talk about how it relates to the shader setup within the principled BSDF. BSDF stands for Bidirectional Scattering Distribution Functions, which is a set of mathematical functions that describe how light is scattered by a surface. The principled BSDF has two subcategories of scattering functions, one dealing with reflected light, a BRDF, and one dealing with transmitted light, a BTDF. BRDF stands for Bidirectional Reflectance Distribution Function. The principled BSDF has a four-tiered BRDF reflectance model, where the base coat is either a diffuse layer, or it can be set as a metallic layer with varying degrees of roughness. Sitting above that is the next BRDF layer, the specular layer, which models glossy reflections and is governed by the index of refraction. The third tier BRDF is the coat layer, which sits above both base and specular. Coat acts like a coating on a surface, like a clear finish, with the most notable example being a car paint, that paint protective varnish like layer designed to protect the paint of the car. This layer is also governed by the Fresnel curve and has its own index of refraction. However, the coat layer can also be made to act like the specular layer by adjusting its roughness. The fourth tier is sheen and is used most often for fabrics, but when used on hard surfaces can act as a dust-like layer. All four layers can be active at the same time. In 4.0, some key changes have taken place to the coat BRDF to improve its functionality. Number one. In 3.6, the coating function used a reflectance model called GTR1, but it's been changed to use the more common GGX algorithm for visual consistency with the specular layer. Number two, the coat function is now properly energy conserved, which is a really big deal. Number three, coat now has its own IOR value, whereas in 3.6, it was hard coded to 1.5. Using a proper index of refraction value to control the coat function is now more physically accurate. Number four, 3.6 had a single clear coat parameter whose purpose was to set the F0 end of the Fresnel curve. The curve was hard coded to an IOR of 1.5. This had the effect of setting the coating's overall intensity and appearance, but it also acted as a scalar value, and its behavior wasn't entirely clear or obvious. It was abstract and unclear what the value actually meant from a user's standpoint, unless you knew what a Fresnel curve was. In 4.0, the clear coat parameter has changed and is now called weight. It's now a scalar value, with 1.0 being the full expression of the Fresnel curve, which in turn is controlled by the coat IOR. This is now user definable. Zero turns the coat function off. The takeaway from this is that the weight function allows you to either turn coat off or to easily adjust the intensity of the coat function, but if you are familiar with using an IOR to control the Fresnel curve, you can simply set weight to 1.0 and adjust the IOR to increase or decrease the strength of the coat function. So it's more physically correct to use the IOR to control the coat function. The weight parameter will affect both the F0 and the F90 end of the Fresnel curve, muting the overall reflectiveness of the coat property, whereas the index of refraction will adjust only the F0 end, making it more physically accurate. So the weight function is more of an artistic control, while the IOR is more of a physically accurate control. Number five. A new tinting mechanism is available that uses a volumetric absorption function within the simulated thickness of the coat layer. This models the way light refracts and absorbs light and is set with the tint parameter. This provides a new way to apply hue shifts to a surface, but it's important to note that the reflections on the tinted coat layer are uncolored. The tinting sits below the coat reflections, but it does affect everything that sits below, including diffuse, metallic, subsurface, specular, and transmission layers. 
So let's take a look at an example where I've got this white silverish metal material where I then add a very slight blue purplish tint to it and you get this. You can see with that color being very subtle and very light, it still has a perceptible change to the hue of that white silver metal. In this next example, we've got this strong red base metallic layer. And when I add a very similar slight purplish bluish, very pastel light color to the tint, you get this sort of pinkish purplish shift in the reds. It adds just a very interesting dimension to the red. In this next example, we start off with a, a yellow goldish color, and by adding a somewhat stronger tint to it, we shift it over into this beautiful amber color. Let's jump in and actually look at Blender right now. So far, I've been doing a lot of lecturing. Now let's do some hands-on. What we want to do is transfer a file from 3.6 over to 4.0, one that contains some objects that have coding, or clear coat as it's called in 3.6, and we're going to move it over to 4 to see what happens. So that we can make sure that we understand that I'm using Blender 3.6, I've set the theme to light, and Blender 4 will be the standard dark theme. When we look at the clear coat function for the object that I have selected, we have a value of 4, and as I mentioned earlier in the video, that meant that it took the Fresnel curve the F0 end, and it set it to 4% reflectivity. Well, the curve itself is defined by an index of refraction that, if it's 1.5, automatically has a low end F0 reflectivity of 4%. But what the developers did was they made it so that you, as the user, could sort of configure that low end value, which is what tends to define the overall look in terms of intensity for reflections on a surface. And they let you configure it. So if you wanted it to be a lower value, or if you wanted it to be a higher value, you could just do that. But it was never really apparent what was happening. But in fact, that's all it's doing is it's setting the low end manually, and then it's just compressing or expanding the Fresnel curve to fit that low end value that we're setting. But the curve that was being expanded or contracted was simply the 1.5 curve shape. If we bring this over, into 4.0, we get the new user interface. So we can see that it now has new tabbed interface elements. So if we come down to coat and we look at this, we can see that weight is 1.0. It's got the roughness and it has the index of refraction, which we did not have before. Now it could be confusing because if we jump back over to 3.6, there, in fact, is an index of refraction right there sitting underneath clear coat roughness. But this was only tied into transmission, and it didn't even affect specular reflections. It was untied to both of those. And so be very aware that when you bring it in, this IOR value is not the same as the IOR value that you see right here. And this is really important to remember. So how did we go from a value of 4 in Blender 3.6 to a value of 1 over here in Blender 4.0? Well, it makes sense. If you remember earlier on, the weight factor of 1 just means that the index of refraction is what governs the degree of reflectivity for the coat function, meaning an index of refraction of 1.5 produces an F0 degree of reflectivity of 4%. And so when 4.0 opened this file, it saw that value of 4 from our 3.6 file and said, oh, that means the index of refraction is totally governing the reflectivity, and it put the value here at 1.0. So let's test this theory. Let's jump back over to 3.6 and change this clear coat value, cut it in half to a value of 2. Now let's save this. Let's jump back over to 4. And what we do is we just do a revert and it will reload that file. Okay, so let's open coat back up. And there it is. We have the weight of 0.5. So Blender 4 said, I see an incoming value of 2 for clear coat. An index of refraction of 1.5 produces 4% at F0. Therefore, the user must want a weight of 50% of what the IOR 1.5 would produce by default.
So that's how it works. Let's test this again. Let's come back in, come back to 3.6, and we're going to do, we're going to go the opposite direction. Let's do 8, which increases the intensity double, and then let's save this, and then we're going to come back over, and look at that. Now the weight is a factor of 2, because it, it took the default F0 reflectivity of 4%, saw that it was 8 in the previous version and said, oh, you must want the weighting to be 2.0. So one of the other changes that I mentioned was energy conservation. This is a really big deal and it's really important. So here is the same file in 3.6, just this really basic testing file that I use. And you can see this white slab against the dark background is both reflective at a diffuse level and at this clear coat level, and it seems kind of glowy. So now let's take a look at what this does in 4.0 with the energy conservation. You can see that the 4.0 version got darker, but it's not just that it got darker in some random way. It was preventing too much energy from reflecting off the surface, and 3.6 was allowing that to happen. Let's take a look at one more quick example of this energy conservation before we move on. I actually used this in my first video on energy conservation. So this is 3.6 without energy conservation. I want your eyes to look at the perimeter of these shapes. These have a metallic layer underneath the base layer and then a coating on top. In 3.6, coatings were not energy conserved. Now, when we take a look at this in 4.0, we get this. You can see it apparently darkened because at high glancing angles, it was correctly balancing the amount of energy and so it wasn't allowing too much energy to leave the surface. This is a really important thing for realism in renderings. Okay, it's been a bit of a journey getting to this point, but let's come into my material tester and let's just play with configuring this. We're now officially into beta territory, so the user interface has been changing a lot over the past month, and it should be pretty stable by this point. I've turned off specular, so we have basically a white, diffuse surface. And the process that we're about to go through is basically the process you would go through to set up car paint, as an example. So we're going to change the base color. Let's make it a yellow, a really sort of rich yellow. Uh, I'm going to take its intensity way down so it's pretty muted, but we want the undercoat not to be fully diffuse. Many, many car paints are very metallic, so a key characteristics of metals is that their reflections are heavily tinted to the color of the metal. So we need to take this into metallic mode, but our roughness is quite low, so we want to increase the roughness. Now, what we want to do is add another layer on top of it. We're going to come over to Coat, we're going to turn the weight up to 1.0, and there we go. We have our coating in place. So the first thing that we want to do now is come in and consider whether the coating's reflections are too strong or not strong enough. I'm going to bet that maybe we want them to be just a little bit more subtle, so I'm going to come down to the IOR and set that to 1.33. That is going to produce about a 2% reflectivity face-on at the F0 position. And there are very good reasons to use the index of refraction because it's a physical value. There are many, many described and charted values for lots of substances that have very specific indices of refraction that you can plug in and use. For the sake of demonstration, I'm going to set this back up to the slightly stronger 1.5. So let's consider adding a tint now. That would be sort of the last thing that you look at. The first thing that you want to remember is the fact that you want your tint color to be very slight and kind of ephemeral. Otherwise, it will very quickly overwhelm whatever colors are underneath it. So let's just play with a very slight sort of complementary color to this goldish yellow that we have, and we're going to push it over there. And what you're going to see is subtly it shifted that color from, from a really rich gold into a gold that's kind of shifted towards the greenish because we've added a little bit of the blue tint to it. And remember, it's not the reflections on the coating layer that are being tinted. It's what's underneath the reflections that are being tinted. So it's going to heavily influence everything underneath it.
So if we come over and we let's just let's just experiment with some other colors. And you can see the effect that these just very subtle colors have on the tonality of that gold. Now keep in mind that if you start getting into these very, very rich colors to the outside of the wheel, it will very quickly overwhelm the underlying base colors that you have. So just sort of keep that in mind. Now one final thing that we're going to look at here is how coatings can affect the look and feel of your glass types of materials. So let's come down to our coat and let's give it a slight blue feel to it. So I'm going to shift up just very slightly into the blue. Look at that. Isn't that interesting? Now you can come in and play with it. You can see saturation is way down here. So I'm going to take saturation and drop it way back. So it's just like just subtle, but look at what that does to that glass. It really gives it some character by doing that. I hope you found this to be a useful introduction into the updates that have happened to the coat slash coatings function in Blender 4.0.